and we are recording. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode five of WTAF with Jimmy James. And today I'm lucky enough to have Chris Thrall joining me. Thank you for coming along, Chris. I um, was introduced to Chris via Sean Atwood's podcast the other day. I uh, highly recommend you go over and watch it. It's a great interview. Uh, I must say, Chris, you're very cool, calm and collected. Your delivery style is very, I think, uh, compared to someone like myself, I'm a bit... I get a bit excited. I get a bit all over the shop, but you, you were very, and you were very well received. I must say, I was looking through the comments and um, I'm, I know you probably follow as well. And David McMillan is very popular on there. He's got that great delivery style and you know, you've got, as you do the public speaking stuff, you've got that down to a T. So that's something I have to work on because it, it's, it's good. It's good. And, and people receive no, it. No, mate, I, I'd say just Jimmy, you're a lovely man. Just be yourself. Ah, you know, that's bless you, people, sir. Bless you. you know, Thank you very that's much. That's what people want. I'd, I'd, Sean's podcast. I was just, uh, I just wanted to stay calm, mate. That was yes, it. You know? Yes, yeah. Well, you got into a few things, you know, and as you said, it was uh, your full story as you were breaking it down. And, you know, we only got into, I think it was two hours and 20 minutes, and there was still so much more. So I'm looking forward to part two. And uh, yes, and as I said, for anyone who would like to get, we're going to chat about a few things today, Chris and I. For anybody who would like to get a bit more of an in-depth to his background, you've got Chris's book, which is uh, available, um, Eating Smoke, right, Chris? There, we there go. it is. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, very well-received book. I've not had a chance to read it myself. I am very um, yep. very deep into the Kindle at the moment, but it's on my list because, uh, like I said, I enjoyed your story the other day. But today, can I just say, go on. Can I just um, say, Jimmy, for yeah. my Eating Smoke, it's the story of me Basically, getting addicted to crystal meth yeah. while living in Hong Kong, yeah. having clinical psychosis for seven months, yeah. and I worked in a nightclub that was run by the 14K triad. So that appeals to, you know, that's a, forget the triad bit. I mean, yeah. and, and, unless you're 14 years old and you want to read about, you know, s stuff that's probably unlikely. You know, my book's just, it's just a real. Yeah. book you're not going to get stories of me killing anyone or yeah um but w w what i'm saying is 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 it's quite for people interested in mental health and what it's like to go mad yeah that book is written from that perspective that's why i love doing podcasts like this because yeah. i uh, you, you you see like the truth right yes, yes indeed Whereas if i go to mainstream media they don't want to know that i was oh, mentally no. ill no they just want to put their own spin on my story and say, oh, you know, this yes. guy thinks he was a Hong Kong triad. And it's like, no, <laughs> no, you didn't read my book, did you? You didn't yeah. get that. All of this is while I'm in psychosis, right? So that's Eat and Smoke. But my second book, and this is just so people know, yeah, like I make no money off these books. It's probably cost me um, hundreds of thousands in lost by, by not having a job, basically. I'm yeah. not saying I don't get to do what I love. Yeah. What I'm saying is this, if you think I'm just trying to plug my books on your show, um, yeah. to anybody watching, you, you need to understand what writing a book in, in the year 2019 is really about. It's oh, not about yeah. making money. It's not really. But, but if you read this and you, you haven't yet achieved all your goals in life, you're going to get an idea of how someone like me went from really being unwell as i said chronic addiction to without any help uh, from support groups like your aa and all this kind of pe people yeah. without any input from the medical community how i single-handedly looked myself in the mirror one day and went things have got to change chris and how i then went on to achieve everything that i wanted to in in this life across all these countries, yes. all these continents you see behind me. Yeah. And it, it's so undervalued, Jimmy, that, that I'm, I'm surrounded by, I'm a, I'm a former Royal, Royal, Royal Marines commando. Um, I'm surrounded by people who want to help veterans, but will they pick up a freaking book that costs 99p on Kindle yeah. and actually learn what some of us go through? Yeah. It's all done in social media now in little, yeah. you know, clicky memes and, and stupid comments and sound bites and, and, and stuff that is so superficial. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, yes, no, thank that. you. Yeah, thank you, Chris. I appreciate thank that. You. 
And um, yeah, off the back of what you just said there, and you know, having uh, experienced psychosis myself for the end of 2017, um, pretty much safe to say zero support um, from the system itself. Friends and family have been absolutely phenomenal, and that's what's gotten me through. And I'm still not through by any stretch, but um, I'm getting there. So as you said, this is the start of something new. And uh, as I said, you guessed five on the podcast. I thought, yeah, I'm just going to go for it and uh, start getting some stuff out there. And um, like off the back of what what, what interested me in, um, a lot about what you were saying the other day talking to Sean was this misunderstanding that we have as a society about addiction. I mentioned to you earlier, I'm 34 years of age now. I've been battling with my demons or addiction as we call it for the best part of 20 years in one form or, or another and um, whether that's been drugs food more recently technology as a as a substitute for drugs and then as you know the main one alcohol you know cannabis was always my kind of go-to and um i'd stop the cannabis for you know maybe a couple of weeks at a time but then i'd slip into the alcohol and it's so easy if you felt like myself I had a beautiful beautiful partner who I'll have a glass of wine. She'll happily just have a little glass of wine after work. Well, I'll drink the rest of the bloody bottle and then maybe crack open another bottle, you know, and it's just, just changing one for the other, for the other, for the other. And I'm by no means out the other side. This is something that we discussed just now about um, hoping to work on those demons now coming up with a good friend of mine, Paul, who's the, uh, the only Buddhist exorcist or trained Buddhist exorcist in the UK, which is quite an accolade. Uh, he's a beautiful soul. Hey. You need at least one in the UK. Well, of That's course, this is it. And he is a, he's a special kind of guy. So I'm kind of blessed to have him in my life and the opportunity to kind of do that with him. So that'll be exciting to share. I know. Um, so, Jimmy, I, Go on. I've got a ninja who fixes my back. So oh, excellent. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Get that. <clears throat> awesome. There's, you know, some amazing people in this world. This you know? is it. There is. There are. And I'm very lucky to know quite a few of them and, and more recently to have met yourself. So uh, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you, Chris. And what I wanted to ask you about, Chris, is like, can you tell us a little bit about your experience then after coming back from Hong Kong, how you got into um, specialist kind of addiction recovery work and all the rest of it, please? Wow. Well, Good question. So, I, I let me talk about myself now, Jim. I'm sorry if I sound no, evasive. Not at, all. not at all. You do you, brother. You do you. This is sorry, another brother. phenomenon that social media has brought around: is people just want short, sharp shocks, yes, short, yeah. sharp injections of adrenaline yeah. to, to 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 pacify the addiction that that the the social media creators over there in what is it silicon valley oh, that, that, silicon that, valley. That, that they they purposely program into this media to get you addicted right we need to get away from that and the reason i like doing podcasts is you can just talk yes. as you would in the pub to your mate yes. and there's no editing there's no yeah. you know cutting out the bits that people might not want to hear yeah brilliant exactly da, 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 da. so i like to talk you know i need i need to sort of talk around subjects sometimes because otherwise it's you know, it, 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 if you don't give the background, yes, it doesn't really help people make sense, right? So exactly. I'm, just I'm a, in a just situation. a quick interjection, if I may, Chris. Sorry to interrupt you, brother. Um, but no holes barred for this one. This uh, WTAF, what the actual fuck is based? Pardon me, I'm in the library, so I shouldn't be swearing. But it's basically what's going on in this world, and there are no holes barred. So as I say, please do go on and uh, yeah, if there's a bit more background you want to give us, crack on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cheers. So I'm just in a situation now, Jimmy, where I I have a totally different spin on addiction and the and the relationship between addiction and, and let's just say drugs yeah. than pretty much most other people walk in this planet. Certainly anyone who believes what they see in the mainstream media, okay? Yeah. Um, I have a very positive and constructive framework around uh, addiction and I, I guess that has all come from my journey so to answer your question yeah I came back from Hong Kong I was severely mentally unwell my dad didn't recognize me in the in the airport I'd lost so much weight I, I was just haggard right yeah, yeah. Can imagine. Um, and of course I was in you know, I was kind of in cloud cuckoo land. So here's the thing. 
in a nutshell, I came back. I had some crystal meth that I smuggled back with me. I had That's about, <laughs> you know, three days worth of that. Don't suggest anybody smuggles drugs no. abroad. One of the most no. freaking stupid things you can ever do. 100%. But let's, let's not digress. Um, and here's the thing, Jimmy, with my psychosis. When the drugs went, the psychosis followed it, right? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I'd done some kind of ir irreparable <clears throat> damage to, to my brain. So three days worth of supply. When it was gone, I started to get, I started to come back down. Yeah. Um, not, not just from the high, but also my mental health just came, instantly came back to, to let, let's call it normality, all right? Yeah. I then hit. I then thought, wow, that was easy. That was easy to come off all that crystal meth stuff, you know, da, 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 da. But of course I was in the UK. It can be a pretty boring and depressing place at the best of times, right? When you're unemployed, you're no longer a Royal Marines commando. You're no longer running the, the for the sake of cliche, the million dollar business I was running in Hong yeah. Kong. I'm no longer high as a kite. And I'm no longer working in a nightclub for the Hong Kong triads, right? All those things are gone from my life. Now I'm, I'm, I'm living on a couch in my two bedroom rabbit hutch. The place is filthy because I've got no, no drive, no enthusiasm. Um, I was depressed, Jimmy, you know, yeah. and I didn't know it because adults are so, were so clueless back then about mental health. Nobody could tell me that I was depressed. Nobody knew it. Not the, not the doctors, not, not my family, not my friends. So I've got this weird syndrome where I'm just feeling I'm flat. I've got nothing to give. I've got, I feel rubbish. I feel worthless. I feel like, I, I mean, I didn't feel worthless as a person. I felt worthless to an employer because, you know, you don't get no qualification. I mean, I, I did some O level GCSEs in the Marines, but I didn't get a trade. Yeah. Um, all my business I created off my own back. So I had no degree in business or anything. Right. And I couldn't even get a job in a factory because I, I wasn't, I had no experience or anything like that. Right. So I spent two years in what I now know was chronic depression or clinical depression. You can call it. All I knew is I couldn't get off the sofa. Yeah. The only thing that would get me away from watching rubbish daytime TV, which you wouldn't get me to watch now if you pay me a million pounds. Yeah. But I, I mean that generally. I, oh, yeah. no, I, I can relate I, to you, that. You keep, keep your money, mate. You know, uh, is is drugs, and of course we don't have crystal meth. So is not so easily uh, available in the UK. So I yeah. get base amphetamine, which is. Um, methamphetamine so a stronger form of speed than you, the stuff you buy in a nightclub right yeah uh, but nowhere near as strong as crystal meth so i would buy that i get it every two weeks when my dole money or my my, my in, in, um, income support came which was that was like 50 pound a week right i spend most of that 50 pound a week or, or, or so 100 pound a fortnight most of it went on on uh, base and I'd be manic okay sorry if someone was asking for the toilet I'm in the library as you know I, right. everyone else don't be yet carry on sorry brother I'd be manic for three four five days without sleep generally uh, I I took to injecting it because it made the hit you know a, yeah. a bit better and, and yeah. kind of made the gear, gear last a bit longer <laughs> So I was shoving needles in my arms during that four or five days, anything up to 10, 15 times a day, had all the needle fixation sort of stuff mm -hmm. that you go through. I read about that. And then yeah. I would cr crash, Jimmy, and I'd wake up 48 hours later, even more depressed than I was before, mm -hmm. utterly shattered. No, nowhere near as shattered as meth when you can stay up for nine days easily, yeah. right? Um, well, not easily, but nine mm. days was the most I stayed up. Um, I'd wake up f ravenously hungry because five days I haven't eaten a single thing. I haven't really drunk much more than, say, a, two glasses of water a day, which yeah. was nowhere in it. When your body is you're yeah. speeding your frigging tits mm. off, yeah, all that 
moisture's coming out your body in two glasses of water. So you can guess the state I was waking up in. Yeah. I then had to deal with my ravenous hunger with like one pound 87 left in my pocket to feed me for nine days. Nice. So I'd go to the supermarket, I'd buy a big bag of like supermarket, you know, no frills, porridge oats for, for 18 P. Yeah. I'd buy a, a big bag of pasta, for 22 P I'd buy yeah. a tub of margarine to get some fat in me uh, yeah. for, for 27 P uh, and I'd buy four pints of milk and that would have to last. Oh, and buy a, like a 17p loaf, right? Cheap yeah. white rice loaf. The good stuff. In the end, I took to shoplifting Bovril, right? I, I wasn't like a prolific thief or anything like that. I've done stupid things on my past. That's an, yeah. uh, another story to make. I'll talk about that later. But, I, I, you know, I wasn't like, I was probably a bit of a stupid shoplifter because why didn't I shoplift more? I just shoplifted a, a jar of... Um, Right. I just shoplift a jar of Bovril to have on the toast, right? And that's how I lived. I, I'd shove four slices of bread in the toaster, lay another four on top because I was always too too starving to wait to do them both. I'd wolf that down. I'd in between sleeping and smoking and I'd watch, you know, uh, uh, Jerry friggin' Springer or, or, or Ready Steady Cook. And it was those those little rubbish programs that were the only thing I, I didn't really live for them, but occasionally a good, good old black and white film would come on and it would take my mind off the depression. It would take my mind off not having any drugs left. And I'd just sit and smoke roll ups and watch that program. And that was my life. My, my house was utterly smashed up. Not, not because I was in anger or anything, but because when I took the amphetamine, it made me so, like, I wanted to achieve stuff. But rather than go out and get a job, I'd do stupid stuff. Like, I'd, I don't know, I'd decide to turn my my couch into a corner suite. It would just seem like the right thing to do, right? Or I'd start, one, one time, I got so high, I decided to take the stairs down. I was going to have a rope instead of the stairs, right? Needless to say, and nothing I ever tried got finished so I, w I woke up in the morning and i'm i'm looking at my stairs and i've, take, I've started to take them apart and i'm just thinking you idiot what, what were you thinking Ugh, one, yeah. my mate was in a wheelchair for crying out loud. what how was he supposed to get up there you know so that was it i had i had like my one friend the guy uh, he had he in a wheelchair he had cerebral palsy he'd come round. we smoked spliff that was like my only company my family couldn't deal with me. Um, you know, when I came back from Hong Kong, they called the police on me three times um, because they couldn't understand my behavior. They thought I was vi violent, Jimmy, but yeah. as you probably well know, most people suffering mental health are only a danger to themselves. I yeah. wasn't going to hurt anybody. I was yeah. just lost and confused. I, I, yeah. I didn't know why my life was like this. You know, I didn't yeah. know why I'd gone from being a, a handsome young commando with loads of money and a bmw in the driveway and a, had a mobile phone when when people you say what's that because nobody knew what they were back then you know yeah i'm not saying this to impress you it's no, a load i understand of, i understand all, all, all that's a load of bullshit you know yeah. but that, that's that's this is what i'm trying to justify in my head so cut a long story short i had a moment of enlightenment one day i woke up i was too ashamed to go out the house I could hear the kids playing in the street and and they loved me, them kids in my street. They all, they didn't even call me Uncle Chris. They thought I was their mate because I was the only adult that I lived in a, like a like a modern estate, you know. I was the only adult in the estate would ever stop and say hello to them and they'd bring their bikes around and I'd fix their bikes <clears> for them. <throat> and they, they'd knock on the door, Chris, you're going to come and play football? And I got to know all their, you know, um, parents and 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 it was it was a it was kind of for someone that i'd always made the promise i'm not going to be that adult that kids are scared of because when yeah. i was young growing up in the 70s they were a bunch of bastards mate you know most adults 
abuse children without even knowing it. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't know that the way they interacted with her was wrong. Mm, mm, it's been a transitional mm, thing, hasn't it? You know, yeah, I'm not. I, I, I don't. I don't talk about you know stuff close to home because, as I said on Sean's podcast, forgiveness is everything for me. When someone has made the effort to say sorry, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, that that that's all they can do. They can't yeah. do more, and and, yeah. and I don't go there, right? But talking in general terms, you could be walking down the street in the seventies, an adult will come running across the road, smack you around the head knock you like unconscious mm. you'd come to like you know my mum would come up to me well, what's the matter with you oh that bloke just hit me mum right she's like what why didn't you tell me well i didn't tell tell her jimmy because i didn't know that was wrong i thought that yeah. was normal behavior right I'm, <clears throat> I'm, um that that was how it was in 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 um, school, they would, hu to, to punish you, they humiliate you, you know? You've got to remember, I'm a kid, that's, I've got a lot going on at home, and, and you know, it's, I, a child shouldn't really have had to be going through that, right? And then I'm at school with a teacher that doesn't even know anything what I'm already going through, and they, them teach did some horrible thing, you know, yeah. horrible things in, in um, you know, to, 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 to chastise me, you, you could say. And I'm a child, so what, what's the worst? I, mean, I wasn't a bad child, Jimmy, you know? It was stupid things like, we, I'd talk to someone while we're putting the chairs on the tables at the end of school, right? Teacher would just scream, throw, here now! Just because I whispered something to like my, my buddy at, at the end of the day, it's not like we're in the middle of the class or anything, right? That, that teacher hoiked me up on the desk, stripped me off, shit. and then proceeded to beat me in front of the class, right? I, I don't give a shit now. It's, it's, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying this to, to, like, I don't live in the past or anything, but I just say it so people who live in this modern era can understand what it was like for some of us. That was wrong. That, that, uh, that event traumatized me. I was so embarrassed jimmy i hid under the table and i didn't want to come out i was hiding yeah. under the table making the excuse that i was cleaning the floor because we, we used to have to like sweep up and all this right and um if you did that to a kid now right you you'd oh. get what five years yeah. in prison easily easily you, you, you know there's sexual abuse yeah physical abuse and mental abuse yeah from a school teacher right yeah so Anyway, di digress a bit, but that's fine. Um, that's fine. But, so I, prom I promised myself I wasn't going to be that adult that didn't understand kids. Yeah. So I built this amazing relationship with all the kids um, in my street, and this morning when I woke up, I couldn't go outside because I could hear them playing, and I knew the second I went out, they'd all come running up. Chris, Chris, come and play football, you know. Yeah. And. I couldn't go out so because I was ashamed of myself, Jimmy, you know? I was, I was ashamed that, like, one of their parents might come up and go, Chris, what the fuck's up? What, what's happened to you? Mm -hmm. You're not looking right, you know? And, 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 that, and in that moment, I had, like, nervous breakdown, number bloody five or something. Right? I just burst out crying because, like... You know, I talk about that little boy that was abused, right? Who went through this childhood he didn't understand. I went to, I went to five schools before the age of ten, I think it was. Mm, yeah. Right, that's five lots of people trying to bully you, and then you have yeah. to stick up and yeah. smack and one to stop yourself getting bullied. That's, I mean, there was other good sides. There was five lots of girls that yeah. would take a chance <laughs> to you as well, right? Which was that was always nice. A man after my own um, heart. Yeah, I was just, it was a funny relationship. The girls used to like me. The boys used to want to, be, you know, yeah. want to fight me. They're rough, and, they're rough and the smooth, as they say. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not arguing. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so, so yeah, so I had all, 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 all these um, schools that I went to. And, and I'm, I'm there in my house in, in Plymouth, and, I, and I'm thinking, that little boy... 
he's still getting abused, right? He's still having a rough time, but you're doing it to him, Chris. You're shoving <clears throat> drugs down his, you know, up his nose, in, injecting it in his arm. You're, you know, you're, you're the one that's living this lifestyle. Now, I'm not talking about addiction here, which is a mental health illness that you cannot control. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm coming to the end of this period of chaos now, and I'm starting to see it for what it is, Jimmy, you know? Yeah. And I'm starting to gain a bit of, con you know, a bit of control over my mind and my thoughts and how I make sense of the world. And I'm saying to myself, like, son, you've got to stop doing this. It's not working, is it? When you started taking that, the, the drugs, it was because they made you happy, they made you energetic. I learned stuff about myself that they told me I was a failure at in school. You know, I used to enjoy going out dancing for hours on end. I used to just feel amazing. I used, to, I used to feel like this is life. This is the person that I'm supposed to be, right? And um, so I had to look myself in the mirror and say, Chris, all that, all that stuff's not working anymore, is it? And from that, in that moment, Jimmy, I made a promise to myself. I was never going to be an angel. Didn't want to give up the drugs because, you know, I enjoyed doing the drugs, if I was honest. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't going to stop slagging them off like, you know, becoming a new evangelist. Going, oh, that was the wrong lifestyle. I made a mistake and I'm so yeah. sorry. It's like I hadn't made any mistake. I, I, I was just someone on the journey trying to make sense of their life. And I'd experimented, yeah. you know, in a few different avenues to, to, to try to, and this is all subconscious. I yeah. subconsciously experimented in an attempt to learn who I was. Why, why do I have different feelings maybe to other people? What, you know, what, what is this life all about? Um, so yeah, it was just time to like start facing the music a bit. Uh, and so I made a promise that I wouldn't give up the drugs, but I'd cut down to when I went to my dealer, instead of giving him all of my money, I'd just get one bag, right. so a 10 pound bag of base. And when it was gone, it was gone. Because here's the thing, I wasn't achieving anything on it anyway. Yeah. So it was a waste of time. But I couldn't get over that, you know, when, you, when your endorphins start kicking off, when you think about scoring, yeah. it's called acting out, right? Yeah. When I'd, you know, I, I'd have to somehow address this acting out just because I had to act out the mm. process of buying and injecting drugs, yeah. that didn't mean I had to do the four or five day thing afterwards, right? Because Maybe. I didn't achieve anything on it and I'd wake up feeling like shit. Yeah. So I decided to buy the £10 bag and just do the acting out thing. And then when it was gone, force myself to go to, well, I'd probably crash out anyway, you know, with tiredness yeah. anyway. And then wake up and get on with my life. And the, central um rule that i made next to the buy in the one gram only was i was always going to smile at the morning sun and tell myself how lucky i was to be here when a lot of like for example marines i knew had died in terrible circumstances you know they died young terrible circumstances um and i wasn't dead i was here this world whether you you know, if you take the human element out of it and all that head fuck, it's a planet, right? There's no getting away from it. It's life. It, I don't even want to try to guess what it is because you don't need to, to appreciate and, and love it, right? Yeah. And so at the bottom, my bottom dollar is that this planet is beautiful as it is. So if, I, if I'm not sensing that, it's because I've got to sort something out up here, right? It's because my priorities aren't right. It's because my thinking's not straight. It's because I'm probably worrying about the wrong things instead of embracing the right things. And that's, that's what I did. I, I'd, I'd have my binge. I'd wake up. But instead of feeling like shit and t rolling over and going to sleep, I'd get up, have a shower, make a cup of tea. That would be my drug. And I'd do the washing up. Simple act do the washing up. I'm going to be writing about this in my, um, in the book I'm writing at the minute about nice. when I, last year I ran from, uh, John O'Groats to Land's End, thousand miles, pretty much nonstop. Right. And 
when people ask me, Chris, how can you do that? I say, it's easy. Yeah. You run around. You, you run around the block. Seriously, that, that's how I start. Uh, I start all my challenges, all my traveling to 80 different countries, my studies, what learning to be, you know, becoming a pilot, becoming a sky. All of that starts with a simple action. And I call that action running around the block because very often I just run around the block. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to put all this in my next book. But that's what I did. And here's the thing. When you reach out to the universe like that, you make that little effort in the morning or whatever it is, the universe gives it back to you equally, right? Yeah, 100%. So the more effort you put, the more <clears throat> you're putting out, the more you're getting back. And, it's, and it really is that simple. So yeah. I just kept putting out. I'd also developed, um, well, in fact, I'd also stumbled upon the path to enlightenment. Um, because I didn't think the same, Jimmy, as I did before I took drugs. I, and it's certainly before I experienced addiction, I felt differently about myself. I felt differently about life and I saw it for what it was. I was now outside the matrix. And part of the reason that, that I think I was able to step outside of it and and make a better sense of the world was that I saw the treatment I was subjected to going through mental health illness. I saw the people that just literally shit their fucking pants and ran away from me because I was unwell, couldn't deal with it, couldn't handle it, were, were afraid of it. And yet I wasn't going to hurt anyone. I was just, I was desperate, Jimmy, you know, I was really unwell and, and um, it set me on a pathway to enlightenment. I've followed that pathway ever since. And now I'm in a beautiful position where, like, I own my own mind. And everyone, you know, a lot of people watching this probably, oh, well, we all do that. It's like, no. <laughs> do we? Most people do don't. we really? Mm. Most people don't. I'd say probably 80% don't. Yeah, there's probably they're another ten percent right yeah. that think they do, but they probably own a part of it. And then there's, and then enlightenment essentially means just seeing it. It it it's shining a light on the world, right? It's shining a light in a world of darkness. That's yeah. that's essentially what it means, and that's the point. I kind of think I'm at now. I'm. I'm obviously I'm only human. I I I um have my same stresses and and bad. I, well, I, I don't really have bad days because that that's a lie. I I know now how to turn like a bad mood into a. Don't allow it to develop into a bad day. Yeah. Exactly. I do the things that are necessary. Catch all of it before. Yeah. yeah. And all all of my all human angst generally. The vast majority of it, I should say, relates to the st stresses society puts on you because it's so full of bullshit, you know? It, it's just so inhumane a, a lot of the time, right? So am I making sense, Jimmy? Sorry, oh, I know. 100%. I'm you are. No, you please do carry on. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm relating 100%. So you, as you were here, as you were. Yeah, and so it, it but being in this position, it's, it's interesting because you know you're quite alone. There's not many. Mm. Um, it's why I'm lo I love meeting people like yourself yeah. and, and, yeah, and Sean. Yeah, you start to meet these uh, enlightened individuals, and we don't live in a world that most people do, and it's quite funny. I'm not anyone listening. I'm not saying I'm special. That's, no, that's it. That's There's nothing not, about that's not not what it's meant to mean at all. I'm not better than anyone. We're, no. I'm, I'm literally not better than a blade of grass. No. We're we're all just everything is equal. Of, Exactly. Yeah, we're, we're all connected. We're and... of, well, what I always say is we're just carbon atoms at the end of the day. You know, we might be held together to look like a body, but we're not. I'm yeah. no different to you. You're no yeah. different to me. You're, you're just a cluster of carbon atoms that's held together. You've got some chemical stuff going on and some electrical impulses in your brain, which is holding a load of liquid together in, a, in you know, liquid and skin and body matter together which helps you form a brain yeah that it, it but we're, we're matter at the end of the day you know it, mm. it 
this brain thing gives us the illusion we're like individual people and we're it's not we're just life experiencing itself in this form right yeah so i, I just say that so so people listening don't think this is a like billy big bulls competition it's not oh, i'm sure i'm sure the type of people who will be listening will certainly not be thinking that but it, thank you for yeah. clarifying for us yeah yeah no, i know exactly what you're saying yeah. chris so that's where i'm at and off the back of it um i've got this interesting situation jimmy where like i wouldn't the experience I tell you, I told you about, you know, it got really horrendous at times. There was one point where I had this itching in my skin, right? So I went to see the doctor and he said, do you take drugs? I was quite, I've always been quite an honest person. So I said, and I didn't want to lie. I said, yes, doctor, yeah. I take, take amphetamine. He went, then you're imagining it, right? What he was doing is what, Doctors and the medical community make the big mistake. And if you, I know you have experience in mental health, it, all, it can be awful. The, the effects of making such rash judgments can be mm. catastrophic on an individual's life. What he was doing was looking in a textbook, you know, yeah. me, medical tomes, reading, oh, when a, someone takes amphetamine, they imagine they've got bugs in their skin. So that's what all he was doing, right? Yeah. And it wasn't his fault. He just, no. it, it, it's just, here's the thing. You can't imagine itching all over. You're either itching or you're not, right? That's it. I know. Yeah. You, you know, so, so, um, and what it was in hindsight, like I'm putting a massive chemical into my, I'm injecting this horrible, bitter chemical mm. called speed, right? Base amphetamine. It's made in a, zinc bathtub in some farmer's bloody yeah. um, stable or something right yeah you know it, it's it's got industrial chemicals in i'm injecting that straight into my bloodstream mm. my body's got to get rid of it somehow right and of yeah. course it's going to come out <clears throat> come out it's, it's going to come out of the skin yeah. and that skin's going to cause you to itch right so i've got my doctor telling me i'm imagining what i've just explained to you well of course i'm yeah. not imagining it so I then spent about a year thinking that, that I had bugs, like, 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 like my house was infected or something. Oh, like right, I, yeah. I, I, I was calling out the, the bug sprayer guy from the council to come and spray. I was throwing away half my stuff. The number of times I threw my food away because I thought it was infected. And, and, and I, I, at one point, I would put myself in a bath of bleach. Right, this is how low, and, I, and I'm off my fucking head mm. as well. Right? I should hope so. You know, I'd, I'd get like a cup of bleach, as strong as I dared, and I'd pour it. And I had no hot water because I couldn't afford to have the heating on. So, in the middle of winter, I'd jump into a freezing cold bath of bleach, and just bleach my skin, trying to cure myself of these bugs. Right, and uh, so yeah, it got dark, but. The point of this is I won't change that, Jimmy, for the world. You couldn't pay me the same way you couldn't pay me now it. to watch daytime TV or, yeah. or watch a soap opera. You couldn't pay me to get rid of that experience because off the back of it, I now understand human beings yeah. as far as I can, right? Yeah. I now understand myself. I now live as an enlight enlightened individual that can go out and get pretty much anything that I want in this life. You know, I, I set a goal and I, and I just go out and achieve it. Um, I have an amazing family that I wouldn't have had, you know, I, would have, I wouldn't have met them if I'd been down a different pathway. And, yeah. and I, I don't want to swap them for anybody because you meet my little boy. Yeah, I bet. Um, I'm probably going to get a bit cliche saying that in podcasts, but I've really been blessed by mother nature with the yeah. best kid ever you know ah, he's beautiful, beautiful stuff oh, he's, um you know he's um ah, he's just something special you know and like people want to take say that i shouldn't have gone through addiction i shouldn't have taken drugs and i don't it makes that you who you are doesn't it you know i wouldn't have my boy i i i'm not a violent but i want to punch you in the face you know yeah so so this is what I'm saying. I've lived, worked, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to say, repeat myself to sound big headed. No, it's like all of those, 
most of those countries you see, well, I've seen over half the countries in the world, 80 countries. Some um, going. That's some good, going. Yeah, I've ventured to the, to the Antarctica and scuba dive with icebergs. I wrote a best-selling book. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a graduate. I've got a degree in, in youth work. You know, I told you I was passionate about young people. It's like, why do I have to explain myself for, for going through addiction to anybody, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And yet the way society frames addiction is if like it's this bad thing that you should be, you know, you should be ashamed of. And they come up with these names like smackhead and, and speed, speed freak. And, and it's like, do we call people who are experiencing cancer? Do we call them cancers? Could you imagine that? Yeah. Can you imagine if someone said to you, look, my mother, she's, she's got cancer. And you went, oh, she's a cancer. Oh, blimey. You, you, you get beaten up every day, right? Yeah. yeah. And yet when it comes to mental health, we are, we have a disgusting attitude towards it in this country. You know, with disgusting attitude, the way we treat prisoners with mental health, the way we treat them full stop, the way we incarcerate people with mental health conditions, yeah. the way I've worked in mental health units and I've seen the relish that, that, that nurses have taken in i want to say beating someone up but they do this thing called um control and restraint is it yeah control and restraint right Mm, yep when that alarm goes off they love it oh they love it the first question you've got to ask yourself why are they all wearing doc martin boots or military boots Mm -mm, exactly they're they're working in the mental health ward with people that are more hot likely to harm themselves than anyone else yeah. why have they got boots on jack boots on like like the the gestat you know like the yeah the Nazi stormtroopers that was the first thing that 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 hit came into my mind then when i saw the alarms go off because this poor old dear was having she was having a moment you know mm. moment in between her meds working or whatever yeah and I, think, I, I think she spat at a worker it was nothing mm. it was harmless right you know, uh, people are going to say, oh, well, you can get AIDS and all that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well the little old lady who went like that in a moment. And, and that's not her behavior. That's yeah. her, her mental illness. Yeah. Beha- you know. Yeah. God, they jumped on this lady, pulled her, you know, pulled her trousers and underwear down. This is a 55-year-old woman in front of everybody started smacking her with the, the needle that's got the tranquilizer mm, in. Yeah, been there. It, it, it was like something off um one flew over the cookies nest, you know? I'm not saying I'm not saying all workers are like no, mental health. Not by any not stretch. Good. It's the same with everything though, right, Chris? It's the same with everything. Yeah. It's you know good and yeah. bad and all. But yeah, go on. Sorry. And I'm not saying that they don't face some tough, you know, situations, but what I am saying is on occasion it's just like my god you know very apparent isn't it with some yeah. of them very apparent so that's that's kind of my situation and the other side of the coin is i now see the ludicrous way that people in society have been taught that drugs is addiction that it's the same thing yeah and it's it's just i think i said this on sean's podcast you know Saying that drugs cause addiction is as stupid as saying, like, I bought a new car and it keeps making me have speeding tickets. Yeah. It, it's, it's so misunderstood. The groups like NA and AA, I know they were started on well-meaning benevolence, mm. and, and I'm not dismissing that. I also know that when you're in a bloody pickle, and you don't understand the psychology of what, what you're going through, they can be a brilliant stopgap, you know? Yeah. But the, what, off the back of that, what they've done, though, is they've promoted a very ill-conceived model of, of addiction mm. by promoting that it's an illness that you yes. can't get better from. Yes, it, I always felt it's that. It's really unhelpful. Unhel- it's not just unhelpful for the individual, who then thinks they're a broken machine and they're like that for the rest of their life. Yeah. But it also uh, has led society to, to have a lot of um, misconceptions around addiction. And 
yeah, there was something else I was going to say then, but uh, probably too much drugs over the years. Can't I? Can <laughs> oh, I'm sure I do the same all the time. I lose my thread all the time. It's absolutely no problem. I'm sure it'll come back. So, if it can, if it can help, I should probably I I explain, right? So, addiction is a mental health condition. Okay, it's not a, it's not a disease or a. No. Not at all. You, 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 you could think of it as an illness, that would be okay. But what it is really, in essence, is what's known as a learned psychological disorder. So by that, what I mean is, let's just take a stupid, silly scenario. You've got uh, Marge, right? Unhappy housewife. Don't know if you still have housewives anymore, but let's just say that. Yeah, right? she's got a load of trauma in her head. She probably doesn't even like, you know, un understand it or, or appreciate it. Right. And she, uh, one day calls her husband over and kicks him in the knackers. And she's like, Oof, have that. Right. All that one. And, uh, just in that moment, she gets a bit of a kick out of it. Right. And thinks, yeah, yeah. Unbeknown to her, in that moment, she's taken her mind off all this trauma that, that's sitting there in the, in the back of her brain, right? Mm -hmm. Just by doing this, this action on, on her poor husband, right? So the next day, she's like, but, spilt my cup of tea, bring a, bring, bring a dishcloth in. All right, my love, in he comes. Bang! Smacked <laughs> him in the knackers again, right? And she's like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and, 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 and like day three, but in here, right? And this goes on. And, and before you know it, she's just smacking her husband in the balls and she doesn't even know why. And when her life start, when it, you know, it's really starting to cause problems now, like yeah. the kids are upset, they're in tears. She's fucking not doing the eye. Oh God. I'm, I'm oh no, you me. didn't. Oh no, you didn't. I'll have to. She's not, she's not fixing the car. I said she was a housewife. <laughs> housewife's iron, right? That's that. I'm not being sick. Uh, right. Don't mind. All right. She's not going to work. Yeah. You know, she's not, she's not maintaining those things in life that you need to do to keep balance, right? Instead, all she wants to do is smash, you know, Poor Smash her husband balls. in the crown jewels, right? And before long, her whole life's fallen apart. What does she do to try and fix it? Smashes her husband again because she she's learned that this is this you know this is the thing that fixes everything, right? So the point I'm trying to make here, Jimmy, as stupid as it sounds, is mm. where did drugs come in that example? Yeah, you know, nothing because drugs. Um, as I said, drugs can't cause addiction. And in this scenario, this woman's got addicted to an action. It's the same with violence, case, isn't it? Yeah, in this case, it's a stupid violent action, right? Mm. Um, it might be that she got addicted to sex. It might be that she got addicted to food. It might be that, you know, she got addicted to, 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 to drinking water, what, whatever Gambling, it is. you know, pingo, whatever. Yeah. There's so many different... <laughs> There's more. Yeah. There's never been. There have never been more outlets for these, as you say, uh, learned behaviours, misdirected kind of. Uh, and as you say, it leads on then to addiction. You know, it's just it's there's just so many different avenues. There are there are there are recovery and support groups for so many things that you would never think. Really, think oh, you're addicted to what? Oh, okay, like it's, yeah, it's, it's bonkers, bonkers. But the reason I use that. It, uh, it, you know, I'm using that example is you can see that drugs didn't even come in the equation, right? You know, yeah. and, and the notion that kicking someone in a bollocks can turn you into an addict, people would laugh at it. Yeah. But this is, this is to give you an idea of how a, a learned psychological disorder begins. You've got Marge there, she does an action. Yeah. Action makes her feel temporarily better about it. So she, she does it again. She does it again. She does it again. Then her life, because she's, she becomes obsessed with pursuing that action. Her life starts to fall apart. Well, in order to fix everything, she does the action again because she's learned that that is what makes everything better. But it's gone past the full, the seesaw has turned now mm. and it's not making things better. It's making things worse. Right. 
and she's in that position that I was in when I was in uh, my sort of squalor in, in Plymouth there. And uh, before I had my moment of, you know, my, my, my epiphany. So, um, the, so the, not only is the notion that, that the, the drug causes the addiction is wrong, but it's also, why are we saying that addiction is such a bad experience? I mean, I know I'm not talking here about when people die of an overdose, but that's a separate mm. issue, right? Yeah. I'm yeah, not talking about such, yeah. somewhat, you know, I'm, I'm, we've got to get away from s confusing a mental health illness called addiction with, say, someone overdosing because they've taken a bad pill at a festival, right? You know, this is... This is where it all gets, it's all fuzzied by the, me the, the, the media to create a bad image of substance use. And mankind has been doing substances since they came out of the caves or since yeah. they lived in the caves. You know? uh, uh, what essentially are, are, are they? Well, you've got a plant, it develops a, a toxin to protect itself. A horse or a you know, sheep comes along, eats that plant and it, and it gets really, really ill but it doesn't eat that plant again, does it? Mm. The trouble is with mankind, we've developed this overly clever brain and we've learned that if we just take a little bit of that toxin, whether it's rot the rotten apples that has created alcohol, yeah. or whether it's a you know marijuana bud, we just take a bit, we can alter our consciousness. And let's be honest, when you're out hunting and gathering all day long, it probably can get a bit boring. Mm. So to go back to your cave in the evening and change your consciousness a bit and get get a bit weirded out or whatever the case may be, paint a few horses on the wall. That was that you know that is something that we've always done. So the sheer lunacy of of trying to ban it with laws is not going to happen. Then you've got the criminal aspect that the people making these laws are also the people that control the flow of the drugs. Yeah. Um, you know, if, you, if, 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 if people want to find out more about that, you've got to look into the, the sort of Arkansas situation and the, um, also the, the Contra rebels in, in Central, uh, Central America over there in Nicaragua. We don't even... Nicaragua. Nicaragua, and that's all Sean's fantastic work. And by all means, please do check it out. Yeah. It is fantastic stuff. But yeah, we don't even have to look that far, uh, Chris. I'll just a quick interjection because I was going to bring it up anyway, but you've you've segued into it nicely, is uh, GW Pharmaceuticals in the UK. Are you aware of the, of the situation with GW Pharmaceuticals? Mate, just, just you saying the word pharmaceuticals, just, that's like a cloud of darkness has just, just come yeah. over my head, you know? That, yeah, I mean, rightly so. I, I, I mean, I've, I've, is it the Pfizer Corporation in America? That, that, no, no, GW Pharmaceuticals, that, the situation is that... Um, you had Victoria Atkins, who was the drug minister, coming out and saying, we are not going to discuss cannabis legislation. It's not a thing. It's, it's, it's illegal. There is no medicinal value. Meanwhile, they're granting licenses or license to cultivate to um, GW Pharmaceuticals, who have the, the biggest exporters on the planet. That, that's out there um, in official documents, in official uh, magazines. So I think it was in the... I was in but the last time I was in prison, it was in the New Scientist magazine. They had UK sugar, this big, huge sugar plantation, and next door, oh, they're just so convenient, we're able to convert into a cannabis plantation, 45 acres, I believe it is, and they are the biggest exporters on the planet, yet the rest of us, not only do we get locked up for it, people get locked up for cultivation. At the very yeah. most, if, 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 if the government are granting their friends licenses to grow and make billions off this drug, then everyone else at the very most should be being done for cultivating without a license but they're not they're getting done for yeah. cultivation so yeah you can yeah, get closer to home with all this stuff go on my question about the pfizer i might have that name wrong so i just so I don't i don't slander anyone unnecessarily but yeah it's the company in america that that <clears throat> produced oxycodone right oxycontin and oxycodone and, yeah 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 now, anyone who's aware will know that the opioid epidemic in America now is rife. Yeah. These drugs are getting, these pharmaceutical medication that you get from your doctor are getting so strong that people are overdosing left, right, and Chelsea, right? Yeah. What a lot of people don't know is it was this uh, 
let's just call them a rich old family. Mm. Uh, I've looked that into all this. Up, yeah, that, that, that developed this medication. So a rich old corporate, corporate owning family. I think it's the Pfizer family. Uh, um, they came up with this very strong, highly, when I say highly addictive, it might sound con- contradictory to what I've just said, but mm, I understand what you mean. What, what I'm trying to say is if you've physiologically got underlying, and chemically, yeah, if you've got underlying issues, um, then you're going to be, you know, addiction is driven by underlying trauma, unresolved trauma, right? Yeah. So if your doctor's giving you the drug, telling you they're perfectly legal and they're fine. You've got a lot of people that are getting addicted to them because they have underlying issues, unresolved issues, right? Yeah. And they're not only they're addicted and they don't understand what's happening to them, but then they can't go and talk to anyone because they go and talk to their doctor. The doctor will stop the prescription yeah. and they're des- they become, you know, they become dependent on this s- stuff, right? Um, so what the point I would just, just, interject is so it's like the the drug is a catalyst for the addiction right it doesn't cause the addiction mm. so i didn't want to sound like i was um contradicting myself no, i understand what you mean um, and so you've got this family what they did they they really invested heavily in this advertising and education campaign for medical practitioners telling them that hey this oxycodone you know, it's no stronger than giving someone a, a an ibuprofen or a paracetamol, right? Already of course then, you've yeah. Got your doctors there that, yeah, you've got your doctors there that don't really understand all this because let's be honest, you know, you do five years at medical school, it's not it's not enough to understand the universe, right? It's not enough to understand even like a tiny bit. It's just enough yeah. to understand the basics of sitting in a chair and dealing with sick people all day and go into a book and now they go to they google it don't they yeah, if they yeah if they don't know something um not having about gps here but no it is what it is yeah we call it how we see it you know they get someone come, they get someone come to them with a bad back and they go oh hang on look him up all oh, right oxycontin this uh, no more harmful than giving you ibuprofen and it's 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 causing you know havoc and it's okay for me to say, you know, I appreciated my experience of addiction, but it's, um, it's another thing to overdose and die, isn't it? You know? Yeah. So, and for those who haven't come out of the other side and I, you know, include myself within that, I've had slips of late and things like that. You know, I said up and down roller coaster. Um, you seem to be fully, fully out of it. And you know, that's what we're all striving for, Chris. And it's like, as you say, for those who are still, are still stuck right deep within it, and you say it's your doctor facilitating that, and as you say, you can't go to the doctor and say, "Look, well, I, I can't stop taking these," because you say they they stop, and then that's how most men end up on the street drugs. And there, there are quite a few documentaries now. I watched one quite a few years back, maybe three or four years ago, about a town over in you know middle Middle East and America, and the whole town had just ravaged, ravaged by oxycodone. It was just crazy to yeah. see. Yeah. Crazy to see. Yeah. And now, all done by uh, government and families, uh, you know, these syndicate families. Yeah, and I, it, it's such a complex subject to talk about because everybody, the, the trouble is everybody's different yeah. and everyone has different make, psychological makeup, social <clears throat> makeup, biological makeup. Everyone has a different history. Everyone has a different drug, right? Yeah. And so it's, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's real food for thought. I mean, my experience with addiction really, like I say, I wouldn't swap it. Right. But then who's to say that being addicted to oxycodone isn't, isn't as productive. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I like to think of, I like to, frame addiction in one way as mother nature seeing an individual going in the wrong direction in life or being upset or having a downer or what what whatever it might be and going wait have some of that because when you work you know 
chucking addiction upon them or introducing addiction into their life as a kind of like a, a, a learning curve to change their behavior. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a tough learning curve and it's harsh. But, you know, I can't say that, that that's the case for everybody, right? I mean, well, you, I, you can only talk for yourself, Chris, at the end of the day. Yeah. And, you know, and it's the same for me. I can only talk for my own experiences, but I'll talk for my own experiences unashamedly and as they were because I wouldn't be where I am today. I say, even with recent, you know, slips and falls have caused problems for myself. At the end of the day, you, as long as you can get back up again and keep going and keep trying, Chumba Wumba style, you know, I get knocked down, I get back up again. It's that's what it's about. And but there's 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 addiction and there's addiction. Like there's the difference between you know someone who is you know addicted to buying a gram of weed a day or um, you know having a bottle of wine every night which is an addiction whether you want to call it a, you know an addiction or not to someone who is out there robbing and having to um raise 500 quid a day for a crack habit you know there's 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 levels and a spectrum to the whole thing and i think you know i've, I've just discussed this with uh with joe on a different joe lomax on a different podcast about um you know guys coming out of 40-year addictions to heroin and things like that these are those those pathways within the brain they are so solidly kind of cemented in it's um, yeah. but as you say you, well, you know they say, oh. they say one of the arguments about change that human beings can instigate change in their own minds is that you develop this neuroplasticity yes and that's saying that your pathways have become that they harden your mm. neural pathways. So the, 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 the messages that your brain is, is receiving, it becomes hardened and, and harder to change as you get older, right? Yeah. Which, but of course, this is all theory. It's not saying it is, and it's not saying it isn't, right? It's a, it's it. a theory, like, 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 like pretty much a lot of things inside, or, it's what science is founded is it's mm -hmm. founded upon theory right so i mean it's like gravity isn't it it's still it's still just a theory it's just a theory you know? just a theory um and what i would say there is that uh, it don't give up hope if you, you know you you just said that i seem to be on top of it wow you know you'd be surprised well, every day uh, is every day isn't it each day starts afresh yeah, yeah i what I'd like to think, what, what I pride myself more on now, I don't pride, that sounds stupid, I don't I go around priding mean. myself, but what, 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 what is a good thing is that when I get myself in that shit now, I can get myself out. Yes, you know? you've got the tools, and you've got you've to create those tools, Chris, you know? Yeah, and this is the thing, is that I, I can start going down that route, route again, Jimmy, and I have done many times, it's called lapsing or yeah. relapsing yeah. and that is absolutely fine because when you understand the cycle of change yeah uh you'll understand that lapsing and relapsing is part of your learning yeah and where does it bring you it brings you back around to the I start of the where you realize something is wrong and you need to take action again yeah and it's it's fine that the problem that's promoted by I, I guess these a lot of these sort of help groups is that that's that they talk about getting clean right not only is that a disgusting word i've never done any you know i've done stupid things in my life i've never done anything unclean by taking drugs mm. right so so the whole language we use is off is offensive yeah. and oppressive and stigmatizing un unhelpful agree with that. Yeah. but secondly you're not trying to get people clean or, or off drugs you're trying to help them get balance in their life okay you know if someone can do one gram of heroin a month and i've met people like this yeah and yet they're fully functioning as a i don't know your stereotypical doctor or solicitor yeah. isn't that a good thing isn't that something to end for what, what what's all this what's all this clean business well that that's brought about by people that have been put under the belief that they can't help themselves yeah and i would argue you always can sometimes it will seem like oh my god i've gone down the bloody 
that avenue again, you know, that yeah. unhelpful avenue again. But you were, you know, don't forget every time you do, you do learn. And it can it can be frustrating, but eventually you can get yourself in a situation where for as much as that short-term endorphins kid you into taking the drug or, or whatever, you can build this mental infrastructure to get you out again. And simply the re the uh, 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 you know one aspect of that is if i if i find myself going down that road i can just go stop yeah think about what's important to you yeah think about the promise you made in my case to my son i'm a dad now he comes yeah. first it's that freaking simple yeah you know think about that you know if you're doing that again it's kind of cowardly behavior because yeah. It's going to affect that little man for the rest of his life. Yeah. And you know that because you, you've experienced that. So, so, you know, I'm not trying to put guilt on anyone here, here Jimmy. Yeah, I'm no, saying I understand. This, is I, this is how I talk to myself, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think about the health aspect. You know, my, I've got a lot of best mates. I'm, I'm sure you're the same. If you're a friend of mine, you, you, you probably very quickly become our best mate, right? Yeah. But, Simon generally was a very old and best mate of mine. He drunk himself to death after coming off the speed, you know. Um, it's, it's a fact that you can't get away from. If you're putting toxins in your body, you're shortening your lifespan. It's just that yeah. simple. You, you ain't going to drink every day and live to 90, 90 years old, you know. And I already, Jimmy, drank. You know, I, I drank and smoked drugs every day for like 30 best part of 30 years you know certainly 25 years um so my body's already been through enough right yeah and i know that that if i go back down that alleyway that that this is what i'm doing and it it's this might sound like a lot of negatives but it's not these this is the cognitive behavioral therapy that i've done on myself yeah because I could be in de stay in denial. I could go, ah, oh, Chris, it's just a drink. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you've 30 years of drinking drugs. That's that. Well, look what you've learned. But you know, I could do all that bullshit, right? But but I'm not. I could I could, um, you know, say, well, it's my house. I'm a man. I work hard. I'm gonna have a beer in front of my son if he doesn't, you know. But yeah. I know I know I know better than that, Jimmy. You know, yeah. I, and. Um, you see, I'm not in denial, and that was um, that's kind of like one of the very sad things about addiction when you see someone in denial. Yeah. And all you can do is use a little bit of kind of challenging technique or motiv motivational, we call it as a drug worker, it's called motivational interviewing, right? So mm. you say to me, uh, oh, I haven't got a problem. I say, what are you doing in a drug agency then? Sorry, I'm confused. Oh, that's my, my family. I come here for my family. Oh, so your family think you've got a problem? Oh, well, uh, well yeah, yeah. Well, they, so well, what What do they think is that? Oh, it's hmm. my drink. <laughs> it's my drink. <laughs> okay, so why would they, why, why, if you say it's not a problem, why would they think it's a problem? Oh, yeah. I, smashed a car up and I got done for drink drive. Ah, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, Jimmy, that sounds like a problem. Mm. You know, do you know you're going to lose your job, you've got a criminal record and, and you smash your car up. So, could you sort of say that maybe it's a little bit, well, now you mention it, yeah, I suppose, and, uh, yeah. you know, you use a bit of that kind of technique and you, and you, you, you can maybe get people over that denial mm. yeah. um, sort of phase, but I guess it's the old, you know, it's the old cliche, isn't it? You're only going to change if you want to change. And that is that is it. And based on what, just so quickly on what you were just saying there, the whole when you catch yourself falling into that hole again, it's how quickly can you pull yourself back out of it? You know, if you're coming from a 10 year addiction and then you might have six months clean and then another couple of years. Whereas if you can, you know, I recently had a full week of just full blown madness and it was just in a bad place where I was able to come out on the other side and I've come out with a much more positive and you see that full circle. As long as you can do that and not allow yourself to fall into it and stay in it, you yeah. know, as you say, clearly, the drugs are not the issue. It's the reason that you've taken the drug. That's what the issue is. So well, 
what is the issue then? If you don't know what it is, you need to do a little bit of digging and find out. And that's kind of what I found is because because I I'm I'm willing because I believe in myself and I want a good life. Yeah, I am. I don't want to be in that denial. So I will yeah. highlight the bad shit about what the behaviour I'm doing. Yeah, you know, if I stop by the off license on the way, I mean, I'm picking up four cans. I might still pick them up. Okay, you know, I might pick up some tobacco while I'm there, and I don't smoke and I don't freaking drink, right? And I'm, but I'm going down that avenue. Again. But I'm doing it knowing, already knowing this has got to change. Mm. This has got to change. And what happens is when you focus on them, you constantly flag up these negatives. You flag up what you're doing wrong. Is you start to find you can't enjoy being in that place. Uh, yeah. You know? That's very because true. you always know where it's going to lead. Mm. You know that it's no good's going to come of it, and you know it's going to change. So, so just a, a silly example. I know that if I'm on, you know, drugs or alcohol, my writing suffers. Right. I also know that I always tell myself my writing's going to. It's not so much my writing's going to be. I was going to say, yeah. It's going to come easier, and I'm going to write loads more, and da 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 da. And when I'm got, I'm sat at the computer trying to write, and I've got a can <laughs> of beer there, you know, and I've, it, it, it's, it's, it's always the same, Jimmy. My writing just goes to shit. I, I can't concentrate. I never get anything done. I stopped going to the gym at, you know, getting up at five in the morning or half five and being at the gym for six or, or swimming a mile before, before, you know, I come, I don't have breakfast. I have a, my, a green smoothie in the morning. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's where my life is now, mate. Green smoothies. Right? Yeah. You live in the dream, baby. Live but, the dream. Uh, you know, I've swum a mile before I come back and have that. I've had a nice sauna. I'm all showered up ready to go for the day I see it. That's the, all that all that, that goes out the window when i yeah. when i start going down those old behaviors and yeah. and it's just that in itself isn't is flags up warning signs for me and i'm like it's got to change already isn't it that behavior it's, I've, mm. I've got to change it already it's not yeah well, it's not it's not going to lead to anything good and I really hope this is making sense because hundred percent, hundred percent. And as I say, you know, you know, I'm I'm going through it myself, and I've been, you know, compared to years gone by, I've been doing quite well, you know. But as you say, no one's perfect. But the the times between the slips are becoming larger and larger, and that's the only thing you can work upon. And that's the thinking, the twisted thinking. So when you know, and it's like you said, they convince yourself, oh, my right will be better. I'll have, have, have a few tinnies on the side, and then. You know that's bullshit. And when you know you're bullshitting yourself, that's because we're the easiest, the, the easiest person to fool and bullshit as ourselves. Once you once you start learning to stop bullshitting yourself, that's the because no one else is falling for your bullshit. That's why I see. I'm, yeah. saying, I'm I'm not falling for your bullshit. I'll pretend I'm falling for your bullshit, but you know I'm not falling for your bullshit. And it's like you yeah. know. So yeah, I'm just gonna quickly. I made a little note there about um, neuroplasticity and the positive side of it being um. 21 days of persistent uh, action is the key to um, locking in a positive habit, also a negative habit, but also a positive habit. And um, that's something that I've kind of learned and put into practice a couple of times with a few things. So, you know, it's like getting back into the gym. I'm struggling. When you're locked up in jail, prison is all you have. Uh, sorry, when you're locked up in prison, uh, the gym is all you have. And people then get addicted to the gym. And the gym is a good... Jim is a it good is. Bloke, I'll say that for him. Yeah, hey. But uh, there are worse addictions in life to have as well. But also, it can become unhealthy as well. You know, anything can become unhealthy. But um, I'm just in the process now of wanting to get back to that place of you just can't wait to get up in the morning and get to the gym because you know afterwards, as you say, you're starting that day on a different kind of level. You know, it's, just, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, all, made, it's all making complete yeah. sense to me. Yeah, they call it morning routine, don't they? There's yes. A, in, in, in life coaching circles, there's a big, um, there's a big sort of uh, emphasis is being put on that at the moment. And yes. it's, yeah, it's really, it, it's very important. And my day now doesn't feel right if I don't do the routine, you know? Yeah. Having a daily um, practice. Um, 
I'm friends with a lovely lady called Shakti Cabral. She does, um, oh, I always forget. It's quite an intricate kind of um, advanced form. She works at Kijong and um, energy healing and all this kind of stuff. But it's getting that daily practice in. I, I gave Sean some information on, I know he was big into his yoga, but the five Tibetan rites, are you familiar with that? It's essentially... No. It's a very simple, it's just five little exercises you do. You do 20, you, you can build up to them. If you're fit enough and healthy, you can crack straight on with the 21 of each. But it's five different movements. And it's the original, it's just a very simple form of um, yoga that the, the old yogis do. And it's what was brought back out from Tibet in the, in the um, originally, that's why, why I understand it, I think. And no, it's been developed now and corporatized and turned into classes and these all different, different kind of um, extended programs and whatnot but all you have to do is just then five tibetan rights and it's just people just need to google it or, or youtube it and it's so easy and when i when i was doing that every day i had that right and that was my beginning of my day before anything else you just get up i'm getting back into it now i've been up the flat and i've been doing it kind of other morning and uh, once you can get that locked in it's just great because you you literally hit every single muscle you you flex in every single position and even just that one single um purposeful practice of a daytime you know you can add more different things to it but even just having one can be so beneficial and as you say you know whether it's that swimming of a mile and coming back and having your green shake it's all positive stuff and having yeah. those things in place are very very helpful and productive i find uh, i'd say the thing the, the place i got myself to now jimmy is like i can't really enjoy being on drugs or being drunk because it it like life off it is too good for me now if that makes yeah. sense and that's it, nice it's a nice place to be I, I have to say it it it's also about set and setting right that's a drug workers term i never used to yeah. use it but people, I, I now hear people using it when they talk to me set uh, and one thing i think that really helped is all the drugs went so shit in this country mm. you know I think the government learned how to ban the chemicals needed to make, for example, yeah. good, good speed, yeah. because it's all synthetic shit now, right? The yeah. pills very often are synthetic, and it's just not a nice yeah. um, feeling, right? It's like people that smoke this synthetic cannabis. I, I had a few tokes on someone's joint. Where, oh, my God, it sent me into such a the worst one of the worst anxiety or panic attacks i think i'd ever experienced it was horrible right i'm not saying that normal weed makes me much better but yeah but that was kind of another i'm i'm just trying to give the full picture here because yeah if it'd be different if i was sat in, in amsterdam now with some good quality you know good quality pills uh or, or if it's south america like the coke down there is just you, people in this country wouldn't know what it was mate they beast, would not ah oh, they would not know was what you get in a club here that i don't know what that is but it's mm -hmm. it, it's probably more dental than it is jungle if that if, yeah. if that makes sense 100 um i'm not saying that if i was in one of those situations i might not um i mean to give an example <laughs> a friend, a friend of mine buys a lot all his stuff off the dark web yeah <clears throat> i went out he lives in uh, croatia and i went out to meet him and he had my god he had some uh, crystal meth some pills and when you buy it it's like ebay so yeah people rate it so if you screw people over sell them crap yeah. yeah you get a bad rating on that on on these websites right and so what you're buying is good you can buy like in uh, um what's it called not um clinical grade cocaine yeah right so what the medical people you right you can buy it all on there right so i went over there and this is we're talking this is a quite a few about five or six years ago now and we just had a night on it and it really reminded me of, of you know it was too good it, it's mm. a bit dangerous you know? it was yeah, a bit dangerous. yeah. The, the, the pills reminded me of the dance era back in the day the, the the crystal meth was just it was the proper good stuff like in Hong 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 Kong you know and um, I'm kind of glad that 
it's all a bit shit in this country now because I, I don't know any dealers anymore, mate. You know, I, yeah. I wouldn't know who to call if I decided to, um, that, yeah, I, I, like I wouldn't know who to call. Um, so it's a double edged sword now with the, what you're describing there, uh, Chris, because on one hand you're saying, um, you wouldn't know who to call, but then on, on, on the other, on the flip side of that is there's no excuse these days to be buying shit drugs off anybody. And I'm not recommending people buy drugs. My point is, no, is that it's, it's, it's no, I have really fucked things up with drugs. So I don't really don't recommend them. If you can do things without drugs, that would be my advised route. But my point is, is that anyone now, as you know, Shana mentioned the dark web, anyone can access the dark web. So, uh, and as you say, it's kind of, it's like Amazon and it, on one side, it's good because it's reduced violence a lot. It's reduced a lot of street activity on one level because a lot of people now will just buy their own from the dark web or groups of friends will um, come by, you know, pool their cash and, and do their thing. So obviously there are different, different threads to this train of thought. Like the one is, on one hand, I think it is a positive thing. I think it is. It has. It has. Does has had positive effects because it, you know, the 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 only people now who are getting in trouble with drugs are irresponsible people because you can buy drug testing kits. All the websites are out there. Your pill reports. Your bunk police. Your blue light. Um, you know, there's no excuse in this day and age to be buying drugs, random drugs off strangers and things like this because. If you, you're going to get in trouble doing shit like that, that's what's going to cause problems, you know. Uh, well, you well Jimmy, you've just highlighted a, a key area there, which is education. Yes, exactly. Okay? And, and off the back of this government's attempt at prohibition, and what do we know about prohibition? Well, we know it doesn't work, right? Yeah, yeah. It, they've, you know, they've obscured all of this. And so you got, I mean, just this weekend, wasn't it? Two young people at a festival bought bought a pill that pill for some reason i don't ask me why but there was something in it that killed these two lads you know I, i'm saying lads i didn't yeah i i, I, I glanced a headline in an article i don't read all that mm. tabloid stuff anymore but i glanced a headline might have been might have been boy and a girl or whatever but the point is you know we we're denying with all this kind of oh drugs is illegal. We're, we're denying them the chance to learn that there's things like testing kits, right? Yeah. Um, we're we're denying them just everything that we're talking about now, right? The government wants to censor, and it doesn't want people having these conversations. Yeah. And um, yeah, and it's just a, it's it's just all. It's unhelpful. disgraceful, really, isn't it? It's disgraceful. That's what it is. Let's, yeah. just, let's just call it how we see it. It's disgraceful. And we know why. We know they've all got shares in you know, the alcohol companies, the pharmaceutical companies, the prisons, the private prison system. You know, yeah. all that. You know, we, 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 you know, you don't have to look into it. None of this shit's hidden. You can look at all the information. It's all they're plain to see. And, you know, you look at countries now. There's, um, I, I met a fella last Saturday we were having a conversation about similar things and he was saying I think it's in Holland there is a new show I think you think he said it was called Drugs Lab I've not had a chance to check it out but I'll check it out and I'll put a, a note in the comments about it um in the description box rather but apparently there's a show uh once a week it comes out and they just test all the la all the latest shit that's out on the streets and that's what the, that's what most of the main suppliers do the main you know your party flock crew from the Netherlands and all this kind of stuff the main so that's all that's happened over there is as you say um they banned all the chemicals. So, for example, they embargoed um, saffron or sassafras oil from the yeah. southeast Pacific. And rightly so. They were decimating beautiful, large, massive yeah. trees just to get at the roots, get the oil. Well, that kind of MGMA was something special. Uh, granted, the way in which it was made was not productive. And, you know, I, I do disagree with it. I didn't at the time. but I don't, Jimmy, I don't. Can you explain, can you explain this on. to me? Because Go on. That comes from the saffron tree in Southeast Asia, right? That's I, right, I, yeah. I, mainly Cambodia from what I understand. Um, yeah. uh, and it was quite obvious when that chemical became in short demand because the pills become shit, right? Yes. yes. They, they become this synthetic. Well, it know, was, uh, PZP was the main, um, 
and it, that's obviously a, an abbreviation for the longer letter of it. And I think most of that was made in New Zealand, I think, from what I understand. Okay. I just, was, what I don't, and it was what I don't stuff, understand on. is when someone come, rocks up at a party and they've got a bag of Mandy. Yeah. Is that, I mean. They I, threw, I, what, what's I, happened? Go on. I, I've always I, I, taken it. I've always taken it that the pills are shit because there's none of that saffron oil left in the world, right? Yeah. But that the MDMA is the real McCoy. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that. No, you are wrong. Yeah. What what it is is that um, the pills are just as good as the MDMA now. The you know, if anything, what 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 happened? And um, they discovered a different way to synthesize the same essential product by using a different base oil called PMK oil. What that is, I'm not entirely sure, but it's it comes from. There's a great show on Netflix, a really um, gritty. I think it's a Belgian drama um, about these two under, undercover detectives who go and um, infiltrate this ecstasy gang. It's a fantastic program. I wouldn't watch it with subtitles. I wouldn't watch it dubbed. Watch it with subtitles because it's, the dubbing is rubbish. But that's an aside. They discovered a way to synthesize MDMA with PMK oil, and what you found then was that not only was the MDMA back to the back to the good old strength, the the pills because it was so easy for them to manufacture, they were just having pissing contests. These um these Dutch crews and you know they're putting pills out that were like three hundred and fifty fucking milligrams and three hundred and seventy five milligrams. That's wow. too, that's too much for even someone with a strong regular um a regular usage and you know you see a young 15 year old girl or a young 16 year old lad or whatever first time uh, taking one of these pills it and it's no wonder they're getting hospitalized but the, the point i don't like mdma anymore because it's just not the same when it's made with sassafras oil you get the i M don't um i don't i can't remember the last time i took street drugs uh yeah i mean i'm ugh. I'm I'm so much happier off all that shit. I yeah. just genuinely, yeah. I, I never, I never say never yeah. because I don't want, if people see me, you know, with a beer in my, I don't want thinking I'm like, I'm a yes. hypocrite. Or I've yeah. fallen down. It's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it all. Right. Just, I prefer like the pure life now. It's just fucking yeah. so much better. And I, and so any young people listening, you know, my deal with everyone is like, you live your life and I'll live mine. Let, yeah. And then, then, then that's fine. Right. But, if you can be happy without all that shit, fucking go, go for it. Right. That's but it, it's kind of hard. It's hard for me to make comment because I was so misguided as a young person. I thought my parents' generation, they were really, they were just really naive about life and about what was in it. They didn't know any, they, they were so this, the British equivalent of the American dream, right? If you're a doctor, you're a good person. But if you're a, a what we now call a refuse collector, they were called dustbin men when I was a kid, mm. and that's like a not such a good person. You know that that is genuinely how that genuinely how I was brought up. Yeah. If you drive a, a big flashy car that ironically destroys the planet because it uses so much fuel, that is a better way to be than someone who drives a mini that saves the planet you, you, you know all yeah. these weird constructs about what makes you happy and successful and and of course it's all just that's it it's all just constructed to try to well as, as we know it's constructed to suit other people's agendas but i guess it also just helped my parents generation make sense of the world right yeah but so for people listening I grew up with a weird, weird sense of what, what, of how life was because my parents were post-war. So they had a certain, you know, it's like, we, we, you, if you drove down the street in the seventies and a woman's walking down the road in high heels. Okay. It's perfectly normal for the woman in your car to go, Oh, look at her, mutton yeah. dressed up as lamb, right? <laughs> say, are you really that judgmental and nasty? And, and why do you care about what, what, yeah. how someone else lives their life? Why are you interested, right? But back then, that was like normal, you know? I mean, back then, if, you, if, if your parents were married, you were called a bastard, right? So 
I would go out to play with a, you know, a certain kid, and my mum would go, oh, you, you going out to play with Brian the Bastard? That was, <laughs> you know, that was the label that they yeah. put on children. You had to grow up with that label, I'm a bastard. Yeah. You know, that, this is how sort of screwed up it was. And this is why for a lot of us, when the ecstasy generation came around and the dance era, and you're, you suddenly find yourself sat on the floor of a sleazy nightclub. We're not, we're not sleazy, it's the wrong word, but a dirty, filthy mm. nightclub. And you're rolling a joint with that refuse collector that your parents kind of said was, a, you don't want to be like that. It actually really is a really nice person. And, and, mm. and, and, and you've got this mutual, instant mutual respect for each other. It was a real eye-opener eye for... You know, it, it wasn't just that it was an eye opener. It was just so reassuring to realize that kind of like what you thought your values really were actually were like they are. Yeah. Because I've never, I've never really judged anyone. And, 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 and but yeah, I, um, again, like I hope, I hope this kind of make, makes sense, but for the young people listening, it's it, it's difficult for me to speak, Jimmy, on the subject. Mm. I never, I never. One thing I've always tried to do in my life is I've never introduced someone to drugs ever. By one person, it was a, a Norwegian friend of mine that came to stay in the UK, and we went out for a, a dance party one night. Yeah, and it was kind of like, do I don't and. <laughs> That's not to say in any way I'd blame anyone that introduced me. Yeah. Because it's just the way it is. It's not, it's just your destiny is your kind of destiny, right? Yeah. So as far as young people go that might listen to this, I don't think I know what to tell you other than just live your life. Mm. You know, I'm not going to recommend you do anything other than certainly try and learn about the, the spiritual side of the universe and learn about good, what makes good diet, learn, learn about at the alkaline, alkaline living, which has had a massive effect, massive, a mm. bigger, bigger effect on my life than anything else I've ever done. Yeah. Awesome. Learn about, you know, learn about kind of the eternal energy that runs through the universe, which we're all a part of, which then, then at that, that cuts out a lot of shit that you have to learn and hear about. If you just realize we're all just ma atoms at the end of the day, vibrating at a certain frequency that holds us in this form and then nothing else really matters so much, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a, it's a real, it's a real difficult one. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of why it's, when you hear people, oh, don't do any of that shit anymore. It's well, hang on, it wasn't shit when mm. you did it, was it? Yeah, exactly. You did it for a reason, you loved exactly. it. When you did it. <clears throat> oh, open your eyes to what 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 you mean is is you don't want that the addiction anymore because of the turmoil it caused caused in your life, right? So yeah, yeah. No, I, I resonate with that, um, Chris. It does make complete sense, but um. What, <laughs> what you were saying makes complete sense from your side of the table and uh, 100% get where you're coming from. For me, it's just a little bit different, obviously being still like this summer, I went to a few free parties, you know what free party scene? Where they just yeah, go, yeah. Yeah. Great. You know, and the vibes and the people there, they're just phenomenal and you know, they'll clean up after they don't leave a scrap of dirt. That's, that's an aside. But what I've kind of observed now is that like, as I said, the MDMA is not the same as it used to be because they make it with this different chemical. And what seems to be now the new wave is now ketamine and these balloons. So that's what seems to be the new wave. And ketamine is a whole other beast now, you know, really it's, messes people up big style. Big style. This is, this is the line, you know, there's a line though between stimulants mm -hmm. and hallucinogens. And I know ketamine is actually a tranquilizer, but, it, but you can hallucinate when you go down a KO. Yeah. There's a few things in life that are bizarre. I do not suggest. I mean, my I, another of my best friends 
uh, drowned after we took LSD oh, together. Yeah. You're becoming so part of our talk about on Sean's, I believe. Yeah, part two. Yeah, well, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm here to tell people the truth. I don't, yeah. I'm, I'm not a drug advocate. I'm not in any, no. I'm not in anything advocate. Mm. I'm like, you live your life, Jimmy, and I'll live mine. Yeah. Then, then we'll, you know, you, you'll find a way. And it's hard because this planet is massively overpopulated, and sadly, people are going to die. Right. It's where do you, where do you, do you know what I'm, do you know what I'm saying? It's where do you try to protect everybody? Yeah. I mean, people have to die. That it's a sad fact of life. And this is kind of, this is also another factor in this. this if you want to, if you want to kind of look at things from a, a holistic point of view, not everyone is going to survive. Not everyone's going to come through addiction because life to a certain extent is about adapting and finding you know finding the way and sadly some people they won't find that way and it it's not it's not their fault often it often it's the the they're a byproduct of their upbringing they haven't had i mean i was probably quite lucky that despite a lot of craziness i had a i, I think i'm naturally quite an intelligent person I'm a bit stupid at too many things, but I do have kind of like a, a perception about me that maybe has um, helped me to, to stay on this planet, right? Um, I guess also other people can have trauma that is so bad that they it's really a, a lot harder for them to get over these coping, you know, these maladapted coping, coping mechanisms, for example, drugs, you know? Um, yeah. So, ah, uh, can I ask something, Chris? You've, um, ask you, away, mate. you've been all over the world, as you say, um, refresh me, well, you've been on every continent essentially, right? Yeah. Do you actually believe the planet is overpopulated or do you, or do you think it's more a case of actually how things are structured rather? Um, because you can fit apparently, and I, I don't quote me on this because I'm not sure, but apparently you can fit every single human being in Alaska with like a football field each or something, something yeah. ridiculous like that. So I'm not calling you I out, I'm just asking bit, for you to elaborate no, on it. No, no, you may, like you, you said, you, you're, not, you, you're not a stupid guy. I, 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 I want you to call me out because I don't want to live with a head mm. full of shit, you know. Yeah. I, I, want, I want truth, Jimmy, you know. <clears> what, what, <throat> so, same. It's like I only tell the truth, right? Mm. And that's not because I'm an angel or I'm, mm. a, you know, again, I'm not a No, it's like learn Eastern philosophy. If you want to live the perfect life, you can't lie because yeah. that is living in the lower part of your body. It's living yeah. in what they call the, uh, the, the beast sense, you know, the beast mm. senses, like the animal area. Above yeah. that is your enlightened area. I don't want to live, you know, your beast mm. area is your, your kind of like people who lie and cheat, people who, who uh, people that are massively. Lust and greed and envy. Lust, and greed, and pornography. Yeah. Um, uh, gl gluttony it's kind of like the, the seven deadly sins right mm. but but it's not so it's not like the, oh god i'm such an angel it's like no it's like i like to live the good life yeah and living a living in this part of the body yeah well, what you put out you get back isn't it so you know and and i like to live like this jimmy because it's just so much easier than the, yeah. the, the clusterfuck of a life i've lived before yeah it's just so much easier to be truthful some people might not like what you say and that's fine, but at least I'm giving them the opportunity to make their own minds up. I'm not hiding or I'm not putting an agenda in, you know, in their way. So going back to what you said about the population, I don't have any issue, right? With like, the, I, I've heard both sides of the debates for global warming, for example. Okay? Yeah. My, my question is more like, <clears throat> I'm not really too bothered about that. What I'm more bothered about is the pollution. Yeah. How long do we continue to think we can destroy the planet, taking any resources from it, whether it's iron, tin, coal, yeah. or what, whatever <clears throat> lifestyle? How, are we that stupid? We think that can go on forever because it can't. Yeah. We're building mountains of rubbish. 
we're destroying the environment we're we're cutting down areas of natural beauty and as we now you know and as we know the rainforest gives us our oxygen and all this sort of stuff um you know my, my question is that so it's not about like how many people per se live on the planet it's about how are we fueling that yeah how exactly. how are we going to allow everybody in china to have two cars and three children yeah how are we going to allow everybody in 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 you know botswana to go to mcdonald's three times a week and throw away all that plastic crap yeah how are we going to support 10 billion more supermarkets on the planet in the next x amount of years you know these are more important yeah. and when it comes down to it you end up thinking about such random thing or such sort of extreme concepts of do we all have to go back to the hunter gatherer thing where we didn't actually damage anything in the planet because it all regrew again you know you might chop down a tree but it's going to regrow you might pick some berries and some nuts but they're going to grow back you know you 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 um you, you didn't use iron tools so you didn't have to do quarrying and destroy that do you, do you see what i'm saying yeah 100 percent. you know how are we going to find a happy balance between where we are now and, and where we were then that is sustainable yeah you know it's like people talk about wind tunnels uh, sorry wind farms blah 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 well yeah but where's that windmill made it's made in a factory mm. it's made out of metal that comes yeah. from the ground it's made out of plastic that pollutes in you know what what when it's defunct they'll rip it down and it goes in landfill yeah did you get what i'm saying so it's not really mm. renewable energy is it it's energy mm. at a cost and sure it might be a 80 percent better than what we had before i i wouldn't dispute that but you know human beings have the ability to think very very cleverly and sadly because these greedy rich elitist men control everything for their own lack of ego or their own overinflated ego they have found very clever ways to stop us all thinking about these things and mm -mm. in the distractions in the form of you say netflix you know yeah. social media <clears throat> um things that we're all guilty of to a certain extent but it's because it's shoved in front of us right um megan megan merkel like if that if that's two words that ever come into your life that ever come out your mouth you have a you, you you're seriously never going to be happy yeah you might be you might be you might be like content you, you know to cruise through and you might think that your lot is good but if you speak if you're seeking like the higher reward in life you've got to raise yourself above all that pop culture stuff you know because it's yeah. there to it's there to confuse the truth it's there to to brainwash you and manipulate you and yeah so no i completely yeah. i completely relate to what you're saying here chris because as you say it's, it's the system you know i just want that's why i wanted to clarify you know i thought you've, you've 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 said exactly what i expected you to say basically because it's nothing to do with the amount of people but it's how those people are living those lives you know and they're, they're, as if you're sure you'll be familiar with the african principle of ubuntu like if it's not good for everyone and it's not good for anyone and that's the oh. kind of that's oh the, exactly that's the principle exactly. we try and live by and you know and, and if we're doing anything it's like you know as it is at the moment it's just it's only going one way and it's going very very fast i think we're probably on the on the on the brink of a societal reset and whether that'll be um mother nature doing that to us or whether it'll be uh well who knows but i think it's, it's going to go one way yeah. or the other quite soon it's hard to know you know where to position yourself because yeah right it, it's at the end of the day like i don't really value my life you know so i'm not really bothered if i do die because i just think that. i'm, I'm yeah. it, it's oh, i'm just a load of molecules it just yeah. does it really you know yeah I, I, it, it, the reason i've got this survival instinct is because i am by definition mother nature you can call that god you can call that universe you can call that spirit whatever but i am by definition mother nature's way of experiencing herself right yeah so there's no more it's not it's not i don't believe in getting any more clever about it than that it's it's 
God created life because it's it's fucking boring on his own, you know. He was there mm. in an infinite bloody galaxy universe. It was just blackness, and he sat there on his tablet, you know, fucking bored as fuck. Ah, oh, do you know what? I'm gonna create something. When I've created that, I want that thing there to chuck something back at me, and then I'm gonna chuck it back, and that's gonna create something. And then it's, and then and then, you know, I want this this life form that I'm created to 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 develop consciousness and it's just a mad experiment isn't it really it is. Way you look at it. It is. So i'm not i'm not massively <clears throat> i don't know where i sit in it all if i'm honest i don't know if i should be a human rights warrior that's that's against fracking and da 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 or whether like it all doesn't matter because at the end of the day if it got that bad you can top yourself and then well that's you know you just go back to the dirt then don't you <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? Well, it's, yeah, it's, you know. It's, it's, I, I genuinely, what I'm trying to say is, is that's like an extreme Buddhist philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. The extreme right of like, hey man, just chill out. It does, what will be, will be, let it all go. And then you've got maybe the extreme left, which is, no, we've got to fight for freedom and what's right and, and da, 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 da. And, and it's, it's kind of hard because if you spend all your life fighting, you are going to burn out, right? Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. And these people, they, they tire you out. I mean, they are a sick bunch of bastards, aren't they? This, I mean, they, they just are this, these walls that they create. Mm. And, and it's, um, it's pretty mad. It? People are just buying into this Iran stuff. Yeah, with no memory that we've just been through all this. Literally, with how long ago? It wasn't that long ago, you, was it? And you're like, what? I mean, are you that short-sighted? You <clears throat> can't see, and it's like makes you wonder, doesn't it? First of all, I just say to people, yeah, even if you are seeing a video and it alleges to show Iranian soldiers placing landmines on on. West, you know, ships from the West, or well, by that I mean America or Britain, obviously. Yeah. Right. First of all, have have the self respect to, to to at least realize you don't know where the hell this video came from. Just just have you don't know who the actors are that are in this. I only use that word actors for a yeah. reason. Uh, you right don't so. know what this mysterious ship is. But secondly, even if it is Iranian soldiers. And even if that is a, a, a ship from SO Oil or something, think who control these people. Yeah. Because you'll find they all went to the same school as your Tony Blair and your blooming David Cameron and your, yeah. you know, all your, your, your extremely high level Freemasons. And by that, I'm not talking about the guys that go for a beer at the lodge on a Friday night. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. these things go much, much higher, right? Yes. You know, they all went to the same schools. They all they, they all belong to the same clubs. They all speak a, 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 an esoteric language that the, the, the man in the street wouldn't understand, right? So, yeah, it might if, if that is soldiers doing that, or if, it, if then you've got to understand that the people that are telling them to do it are the same people that went to school with David Cameron and Tony Blair and did, 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 do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, yeah. the same ties. They, 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 they make the same secret deals because war really suits their purpose. They sell the set, you know, they make money off these bombs, bullets and guns and they do it all. And if you want to go to war, then you need to look a veteran in the eye when he's lost his legs and say, I'm glad about that. You, you, you know, and, 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 um, you know, if you really want to thank a veteran for his service and don't send him to war because it's unnecessary. You know, it's, the, the vast majority of wars are, 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 are created mm. just, you know, for, 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 we're probably getting a bit, bit deep now, but I think, no, you know, I was gonna, this is what I was going to come on to actually, I hope it's okay with you to come on to this stuff. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm an ex, yeah. I'm an, uh, this was going to be my next, I've literally got it written here about the military stuff because, um, yeah, go, 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 go for it. it might, might yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, no, I didn't think you'd mind because um, you obviously. Hey, Jimmy, can I just say I've got go to on. go and pick my little man up. I tell you what, go on. I, In what about time you... five minutes. So, do you want to just cover one more subject, and we can take yes. this off? Yeah, of course, of course. Well, I tell you what, then I'll I'll leave the military stuff till next time, and I'll just ask if I may. How old is he? Number one, if that's not too intrusive to ask. My little one. Yeah. Is four. 
Four. Oh, no, she might. Four going, going on 14, we you uh, say. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, my niece, is, niece um, my niece is around the same age, a little bit younger. Well, actually, yeah, I think she's just slightly younger. And um, at that age, it's just, we were talking about it. Um, I'm part of a little group that meets up every second and fourth Thursday called the Rabbit Hole. And um, one of our members, a dear friend of mine, Tracy, was talking about she's been a primary slash junior school teacher for um, 20 odd years. And she said, you know, when they come in, regardless of what kind of home life they have, they might have the most terrific home life, but they still have that spark, that light and that shine of them. And it's only when they get to come towards the end, 10, 11, that they start to harden up and all the rest of it. How do you sit with your little lad and kind of education wise? And do you see what I see when we start seeing now the fuckeries within the education system? We know it's not oh. an education system, an indoctrination system. And how do, you, how do you feel about that now? And how do you approach it with regards to balancing the bullshit? It's not all bullshit, don't get me wrong, uh, but there is a lot of bullshit now that they're filling these little, little human beings' minds with, preparing them ready for the system, ready for the machine, just to be chewed up yeah. with cogs. Yeah. How, do you, how do, you find, do you find that balance a difficult thing, or do you find you're able to kind of... You know, have there been any shocking moments where he's come home and told you anything they've been taught? He's probably a little bit young at the moment, but well, some of the stuff they're teaching in these schools now is just crazy. Well, of course. Um, I think my partner and I, aren't my, our stance is just to let it ride, mate, because we can't afford to go for an alternative form. You know, well, there's not yeah. many alternatives. <clears throat> no, there in, isn't. In, in other countries, you get alternative education. You, like, you've got this Steiner Waldorf education, which is much more focused. It much more focused about the individual from what i understand i've heard of it i've not looked into it too much yeah I see. in scandinavia anyone can start a school right, right. they call it folk, folk high schools right oh, so anyone cool. can start like a specialist sort of school da, da, da. so in this country we're limited it suits us that we've got him into a really nice school it's, they've got a focus on sport um which i i really like that it's it's I just quite it's the, everything about it is is really it is about the best you'd expect from a primary school right brilliant that's good to know now yeah of course i mean there's going to be stuff that that i kind of wish they wouldn't teach them or or whatever it's it's a functionist is what Karl marx would call a functionist education it's it's basically you know, you've got to prepare these people to go and work in an office all their life or a call centre. I mean, that's what it is in essence, isn't it? <clears throat> basically, you know, basically sacrifice all their dreams and everything to, to make the ruling elite even richer than they already are. And it's very cleverly set up. They've been yeah. doing this since, since before the time of the pyramids. They know what they're doing, you know, and, and, and it's just the way it is. But we would hope to have our influence on him. Yes. And to be able to get him to critical think, to analyse the experience mm. that he's going through. Um, you know, I can't see us homeschooling him, although I wouldn't have any qualms taking a child out of school if they were getting bullied, because I think that wrecks a, a young, that wrecks a person for life. I would say wreck, that's very mm. strong. I know, you mean. I know what you I'm mean. Sure I'm sure there's people that are... are very uh, impressively got themselves reconditioned from that 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 horrible trauma but i i'm talking about the people i meet now as a 50 year old man that i went to school with and like they still go on about that bully, bullying that they went through when we were 11 years old you know it's it's awful so i wouldn't have any hassle you know I, i'm a bit old school i want to go charging in there and go right who is it yeah, <laughs> and, 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 but I'm also wise enough to know that person bullying is a victim as well. You know, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they're very often, very often, <clears throat> a terrible, terrible time be, be, behind the scenes. So yeah, um, that's kind of where I stand with it. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna have their bloody Christian, what is it, the service in the morning. Mm, I don't yeah. mind it. It'll give, it'll give my boy an understanding of what religion is, and then. I can maybe help him to understand that actually there's a lot of theories about who Jesus was and what, yeah. what, what, yeah. what he stood for. All in good and, time, isn't it? All in good time. Yeah. All in, you know, <laughs> all in good time. And 
well, yeah, so I'm not too, I, you know, I want to just want him to be a happy little boy. And, and yeah. I had a really enlightening experience the other day because we went in for his, they call it graduation, which I, I'm not sure I'm on, that sits comfortably with me, but they do all that now, don't they? Right. Um, uh, so, yeah, we went in for his graduation and uh, where they had a break and we went, we were got coffee and cake or whatever, don't, um, tea and coffee rather and and the kids went outside to play and I've never seen my little boy so excited I'd never seen him like that because he's he hasn't got any brothers or sisters right okay yeah um, yeah ah, but that's nice. I think also the world we're living in now is kids don't seem to like come play with each other no, it's just not like that now, is it? No, I know, no, he's, only, I know he's only four, but even the older kids, it's, yeah. all, it's all consoles and you know, computers. We try and reach out to the other parents at the nursery and say, Look, listen, here's our phone number. Yeah. Our kid loves your kid. If you just come... And it just <clears> doesn't seem to happen. I, I guess there's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, but anyway. yeah. Well, I tell you, I appreciate your, your response there. really do it very honest and uh, frank. And, well, the thing I meant to say, Jim, is uh, I saw him run out in the playground. With oh, the kids. yes, yeah, he sorry. So happy. I, I hadn't seen that side to him before. My oh, little that was boy, nice. He just looked like, like the loveliest little man in the whole world. Oh, he beautiful. Just, he just couldn't wait to kick the football, and he's going... <laughs> 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 he's just so excited to be... And, I haven't seen that and it was really a special moment. It made me feel a bit bad that I can't create that for him when he comes home, you know. Oh, and it, no, it's something different, isn't it? I mean, you, you've got, you, you're providing something in a different way, but I understand what well, you're saying. I try yeah. to, but yeah. it makes me, I do realise I have to say to him so much, I'm working, darling, I'm working. Right. And I hate that. I know. Yeah. Because I'll I'm tell working. you now, if anybody thinks, like, I think, if anybody thinks um, like you, people come on podcasts to make a load of money or to do, oh, like, no. please believe me, I want nothing to do with a public sphere. You can keep it. Okay, I love meeting guys like you, Jimmy. It really yeah, makes likewise, life, likewise. Like, it makes life uh, worth living. Right? I'm not. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, I don't want to be in it. In you know. Like, I, I just don't want to in any way be in a public. I want to be with my family doing nice yeah. things. That yeah, is same, it. Same. The reason I'm doing all this is, is that I don't even have like a, a, a stable income. You know, it fluctuates month to month yeah. and some months I can barely, I bet, you know, yeah. I don't say I barely get by cause I'm lucky. I've got a little bit of savings, but so yeah, I, it guts me when I have to say to him, Darling, I'm I'm working and I or or I'm on my phone and it's a work thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's I'm not blind to this, Jimmy. I know yeah. that will affect him. Yeah. And yeah. it's getting to the point where I'm if if I like it's fine when you're a single guy. You can sit at the computer drinking, smoking, you know, off your head if you want, writing your books and doing your social media, you know, reaching out to your fans and da 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 da. That, that that's fine but things are just so different when you when you when when you've got responsibility of another human being you know yeah yeah so, yeah oh, well, I'll I, fair play i appreciate that i would love to thank you very much chris it's been an awesome chat um and yeah i think uh if it's all right by you we should definitely pencil another one and next time we've yeah. got a few we can go right into the, the military stuff because um like i said today we've gone a lot more not more than i'd rather i've really enjoyed it but it, we've got a lot more into um you know, the addiction stuff, which has been fantastic and quite relevant for me myself, I must say lately. So I really appreciate that. I want to say thank you. So, Good. yes, have yourself a wonderful evening, sir. And uh, we'll catch up again really soon. And I'll thank you again. All right, brother. All the best, brother. Take care. Nice, nice one. Ta-ra, mate. Cheers, cheers. See you soon.